Welcome to episode 30 of Instant Expertise Marketing. We appreciate you listening in as always. I'm so excited and proud to share this episode with you. We have finally launched our latest course on pivoting your business in the new norm. And as we've discussed our plans for releasing content around it, my amazing business partner dropped a couple of truth bombs on me that made me stop in my tracks. I'm Yvette Brown, co-founder of X-Promos Marketing Mastery. I became an entrepreneur at 23 by starting a promotions agency with my then 29-year-old business partner, Sherry Nomadi. And I'm Sherry Nomadi. Yvette and I approach business from opposite ends of the spectrum, yet we nearly always come to the same conclusions on how to help our clients succeed. So today, I'm going to turn the mic over to Sherry for most of this one. She's got some great wisdom to share, and I certainly don't want to steal her thunder. (laughs) Thanks, Yvette. So early on in my career, when Yvette and I were 28 and 22, we were working together at a marketing agency. Now, I had a lot of experience at big corporations under my belt already with companies like Hyatt Hotels Corporation, even one of the largest advertising agencies in the country, and a high-end cosmetics company. Yes, I've actually met Diane von Furstenberg in person, but that's a story for another day. I want to tell you that my corporate training showed me how relationships either help or hinder people climb the corporate ladder or become successful or not successful. I saw it every day and I am a great observer, maybe because I love people watching, but this marketing job I had where I met my business partner, Yvette Brown, was actually the last job I had before becoming an entrepreneur. But I was already thinking like one. When I was hired, I didn't get to work on the high profile account. There were two jobs open. That was given to someone who had worked with this boss before at another agency. Instead, I was given the agency dog account, literally the account that no one cared about. No one ever asked about it in company status meetings. No one really cared about it. But this one little account was all mine. I built trust over time. I took this on as my personal passion and will to make this the best client in the agency. And within one year, I grew this account to the point where it was the most profitable account in the entire agency. How did I do that? Well, I did this by taking an interest in the client's business. I learned a lot about pool care and how things in the marketplace impacted them. I listened intently when he talked about goals and challenges. And I took an interest in him personally now and then. I made sure to have dinners with him and his wife occasionally. And we established this trust with each other. At one point, he even invited my husband and me over to his house for dinner to meet his family. Instinctively, I knew I had earned his trust. So over time, I raised the prices to reflect what I thought was more of a fair market value. And I made damn sure the agency never let him down. To do that, I had developed great working relationships with key people in the agency and the outside vendors that helped support me. They made me look good to the client. And I made sure to never give false deadlines. I always went out of my way to give good feedback and let them know how much that not only I appreciated them, but how much the client loved the work we were delivering. None of that cost any money. It was all about developing a good relationship and rapport with everyone I needed to do my job, which was make my client look great. I want you to think about right now how you can become essential to your company, your boss, your clients, your customers. Start that today. You see, I became essential to him. Guess what? When you have built an account to the most profitable one in the agency over a year, the president takes note. And one day he said to me, hey, Sherry, I'm going to be out there in California and I'd like to stop by and see the client and have a meeting. 
I knew Doug was not going to be thrilled about it. I talked to him about it. I told him the president was coming out and reluctantly, really only because I begged him, he said he would take a meeting. And much to my surprise, when we got to his offices, we sat down and really only a few minutes into the meeting, my client told the president of the agency I was working for that the only reason they had his business today was because of me. And he told them loud and clear that if I ever left, his business would leave the agency also. And as a side note, he did ask me in private if I was ever planning to leave, would I let him know and give him some warning so he could plan what he would do with his business. And uh, I did, I did just that because in 1989, Yvette and I launched our own agency and I gave him full warning so he knew what was happening and he did take his business from that agency. So when Yvette and I launched in 89, we landed the Mattel Toys business in 1990. We started very small. We were doing work no other agency would take on. And when I say small, I mean really small. But you know what? We over delivered every time. How do you do that? Well, make sure you pad the delivery date. You know, we're gonna have that for you on Friday. And guess what? We deliver on Thursday. And they notice. They might not say it, but they notice. Always over deliver. We also brought them new ideas, just things we thought of. They didn't ask for it, but we brought it. And they remained an account of ours for 12 years. But the profit on that account those small projects eventually turned into a $2 million account for us in two years. How did we do that? Well, I will admit that there is someone who was working at that other agency I was talking about that moved out to California to take a job at Mattel Toys. I didn't really know her. I knew she was on another account team. She was actually working on the highest profile account in the agency. So we knew of each other. And I knew she took this job I had heard through the grapevine. So I called her up one day and I knew I couldn't just come right out and ask for a meeting. So instead I invited her to a networking event with this organization that I was a member of that was coming up that week. She kind of reluctantly said, okay, but she met me there. And that's where the relationship really started. And to this day, we are still friends. And we still talk about that, how she laughs at attending that networking event with me. But aside from creating fabulous campaigns that drove revenue for this client, we made our clients, specifically at Mattel, look great to their CEO and to their best retail accounts. We brought them ideas regularly unsolicited. No other agency was doing that. And they thought we were crazy for doing it. But it kept them talking to us every single day because we were essential. They had to talk to us every day. They might miss something. We might have something to say. And guess what? Hmm, a lot of those days they had something brewing and they wanted us to think about it. So we got the project. So not only were we making them look great to their CEO, but Mattel won the most coveted award with their biggest account year after year after year under our reign with them. That was Vendor of the Year. And they were so proud of that. One day we were at their offices, just finishing up a meeting, getting ready to leave. And the client came to us and said, oh, I got to put you in this conference room because I have to call our biggest account back in 20 minutes. And I need to give them the best idea ever for this holiday season. I'll be back in 10 minutes to hear your idea. <laughs> and Yvette and I were like, okay, great, pressure on. And we did, we delivered the best idea. And he actually said, wow, that is the best idea. They're gonna love it. And we gave away ideas like this all the time because we wanted to add value. It didn't cost money. We knew they were gonna give us business. We became essential to their lives and their business world. We were always first on their call list. They liked us, they trusted us, 
and they wanted us to be profitable. You see, to them, we were essential. <laughs> That's awesome insight, Sherry. I love it. And in fact, I remember that day in that office when we got those 10 minutes to come up with that big idea. I mean, to that day, that was a long time ago, but I do remember it like it was yesterday. Yep. Our challenge for you today is in this time when so many businesses are struggling is to figure out how you can become essential to your boss, how you can become essential to your clients, essential to your customers. Do that and they will come back to you. They will pick you even during these recession times. So here's a few considerations for you to think about how you can become essential. First, accept that starting small is okay. Like Sherry said, you can take those first few clients and customers and turn them into very faithful and loyal customers. Don't ever dismiss the size of your roster. Just keep engaging with them until you are essential. You know, thinking back to those days with Mattel, when we had the one-on-one -on -one meetings, we were a fair distance apart from one another, probably 45 minutes to an hour. Sherry and I made the drive up to their offices three, four times a week. And it was worth it just to be in front of them presenting things because you know what? Like Sherry said, they always had something else for us to talk about. Something else that was on our, their mind, some other project to give us to think about and kept moving us forward. Also, make sure you always do what you say you're going to do, big or small, whether it's sending an email or delivering a package, following up on a question or reminding them of a deadline. Always, always, always. This is how you build trust. Next, take the time to learn about their business on your own. Whether this means sitting at your desk and using Google to find out what's going on with their business and reading the business recaps, or whether it means looking up their competition and see what's going on with them, or talking to some of their key customers, it doesn't matter the how, but it matters that you're interested, that you see insights that are going on with the industry, and that you share those with these customers. And really importantly, I think for a lot of us entrepreneurs is you need to listen intently to their needs. You need to give those clients what they want, but then add to that what they need. That's really important. And finally, accept that being essential does come with a price. Sometimes it's hard for us to justify higher prices or bigger margins and we wonder in our head if that's the right thing to do, but understand that people will pay a premium to have someone they can count on. That is the entire original premise of FedEx. So don't be afraid to increase your fees to reflect that. That is absolutely right. And I hope you can find a way to become essential for your best customers, really for all your customers. It will improve your profitability. Plus, it actually feels good to be the one that others can count on. Thanks for listening. Come back soon. And if it's right for you, check out our new course offering at thriveinthenewnorm.com. Look for it in the link below for the description.